Okay, thanks, Cameron, and thank you to the organizers uh, for inviting me today to speak about my work on uh, broad spectrum antiviral discovery and especially to introduce uh, our new virology service platform, uh, Virology Research Services. So, I don't really need to introduce to this audience uh, the risk that is uh, associated with emerging and re emerging viruses. Um, but the only thing I would like to highlight uh, is uh, how in the past uh, few decades, uh, as a consequence of uh, global warming, globalization, air traveling, uh, and uh, uncontrolled urbanization, we have seen that viruses that used to be uh, like a distant problems uh, uh, now have shown us that they can spread fast and they can reach every corner of the planet with uh, unpredictable consequences. And uh, so the real question that we're all asking is, uh, what can we really do about this? And uh, how can we uh, prepare against something that we don't know where and how is going to emerge like a new virus? And uh, of course, uh, uh, monitoring uh, is, uh, I'm sorry. Monitoring is uh, uh, a very valid strategy. Uh, if we monitor, we know what is coming up, and if we have uh, a good containment measure in place, uh, we can uh, uh, limit the spread of an infection. But what I would really like to advocate today is the importance uh, of a high quality and sustained uh, research at the more fundamental level. So the importance of uh, really understanding uh, the interaction between uh, viruses or pathogen in general with uh, human or animal hosts uh, and of testing uh, new uh, scientific hypotheses and coming up with new uh, solutions. Uh, however, there are some uh, uh, problems that we need to overcome in virology research, and these are really obstacles that are intrinsically associated with this type of work, uh, where we need uh, costly high containment facilities, and there are technical difficulties as well with working with viruses, you need to know the viruses, there are many, they're all different, they keep coming up and you also need to know the assays uh, uh, to use to study viruses and all the biosafety and biosecurity regulation around them. And also, uh, we face uh, another interesting problem, which is that differently from many diseases that are constantly with us, like diabetes, cardiovascular, cancer, viral infections tend to come and go. So it's a bit difficult to keep the interest high and the fundings coming. But we think that in the past few years, uh, we have really seen a change in trend from uh, government and funding bodies. So we think it's a really exciting time to, uh, for virology and pathogen research in general. So for the past four, four and a half years, I have worked uh, at University College London in the laboratory of Professor Mark Marsh testing the hypothesis that if we identify and target a cellular pathway that several different viruses, even from different families, use uh, to infect the cells and spread, then uh, we could potentially have a broad spectrum antiviral drug, so something that can be active against uh, several different pathogens. Because the problems that we have uh, in virology is that viruses are all very different uh, uh, from one another, and if we target uh, a viral protein of a specific virus, as most of our current antiviral portfolio does, uh, that same drug is very unlikely to be effective uh, against uh, uh, viruses, even of the same families. So what we think is that if we shift paradigm and uh, we try to target cellular pathway, that most of the viruses that we know today use to infect the cells, then uh, we could really come up uh, with something that uh, could target also viruses that have yet to emerge. And this could be a very uh, effective uh, uh, way to um, stop an epidemic uh, and it can be rapidly uh, deployed uh, in, during an outbreak in, in a fairly cost-effective way because realistically we wouldn't have the funding to develop a new drug for every virus that is out there. So while working on, uh, on this, uh, um, we have developed uh, uh, what I really call like an arsenal of viruses, assay, 
tools and expertise uh, to move uh, from uh, uh, high throughput phenotypic screening, which is where we started from, uh, to validate uh, the hits that came out from this screening uh, across different viral families, uh, looking for a broad spectrum compound, and then uh, working out the mode of action. We focus primarily on entry, which is one of the most conserved uh, mechanism of interaction between a virus and, and a cell host. And then we also move this work in vivo, uh, looking at the pharmacokinetics of some of these compounds and their effectiveness uh, in vivo. And uh, it was interesting for us to see that you can start from a phenotypic screening and end up with something that actually can lower uh, the viral titers in, in the blood. So um, very promising. I hope uh, um, we're going to publish this work soon, so you will probably be able to read more about this. Um, but basically, while working on all this, and as I said, developing all these tools, we realized that the wealth of uh, uh, reagent expertise uh, uh, that we had available and also of facilities uh, could benefit uh, not just uh, our research, uh, but also the research of other scientists <coughs> involved in the same type of problem. And this is uh, how in uh, 2017 uh, I founded uh, Virology Research Services. So well, we are scientists with a strong background in virology, immunology, cell and molecular biology, and our goal is to provide other scientists from industry, pharma, but also academia with the possibility to outsource their virology research to our team working in state-of-the-art facilities of one of the top universities, the University College London. And we can really help uh, with many different stages of uh, uh, drug discovery, of uh, yeah, virology research in general. So in the anti-viral um, discovery, for instance, we can start uh, from high throughput screenings of siRNA or small molecule compounds, or simply testing uh, hits or compounds for their activity against multiple viruses uh, and follow on with uh, mode of action studies. But we have also, sorry, I pressed the wrong one. We have also been involved uh, in uh, um, vaccine development, as we can test uh, the neutralization capacity of uh, antibodies and also measure the immune response uh, of the vaccine uh, of choice and also specific assays that can be um, really typical, specific for, um, for viruses like antibody-dependent enhancement for dengue. And very recently, we have also helped uh, in the development of diagnostic, where we can test for the specificity of uh, epitopes or, in general, reagent uh, for, again, the application, the diagnostic application of choice, which is, again, is a big priority in, in global health. But we are also basic scientists, so uh, we can support any uh, more fundamental research project uh, looking at interaction between the virus and, uh, and uh, the cells, and we have strong expertise in several areas, including immunology, cell biology, trafficking. So a fairly flexible setup. And uh, also something that is quite, I believe, unique of our organization is that we don't work only on one virus or on a family of virus, uh, but uh, we can work and also advise uh, on a variety of uh, biosafety level two and three pathogens, including RNA viruses, DNA viruses, retroviruses, and we also have a number of viral systems, including replicons, uh, virus like particle, or uh, viral uh, protein expression system. We also strongly believe that there is a need for a platform that not only provides services, but that is strongly ingrained in research. And this is why we keep up our own uh, R&D program. In collaboration uh, with University College London, we keep working on our broad spectrum of targeted antiviral development. We're just about to start uh, a bigger screening with much, much um, larger number of compounds. But we're also very active in, act in uh, assay development where we try to revisit uh, current and sometimes a bit outdated virology assay 
trying to modernize, miniaturize, and standardize them. Modernization by implementing uh, new technologies and also by integrating the most recent discoveries in virus and cell biology so that we can have a more relevant and more physiological uh, kind of assay. Uh, miniaturizing them, we can run assay faster, but especially we can save uh, very precious material for multiple assays uh, or simply for increase the number of replicants and so the robustness of each test. And standardization, which is another hot point uh, in uh, virology research so that we can actually uh, reproduce the same results across different uh, labs around the world. So what we really think is that um, virology, the virology field uh, is uh, facing uh, new challenges today and uh, it feels a bit like the easy solutions have been found and implemented and now we're facing new uh, problems that need uh, new um, thinking. And what we want to do really is to support uh, this new thinking through our own research, but also by supporting any scientist uh, in academia or in industry uh, to test their idea and uh, moving them forward uh, in, a, in an effective and also cost-effective manner that saves having to reinvent the wheel every single time or purchasing uh, expensive equipment. And, uh, I am actually very excited to be here today and uh, hear more about the problem faced by uh, study in neglected tropical diseases. Some of our viruses, actually most of our viruses, are uh, tropical viruses. So I'm uh, looking forward to hear more from you as well of how you think we could, uh, we could help. So thank you so much for listening and uh, happy to take any questions if you have any. Thank you. Our phenotypic screening was already starting by looking at early stages of, uh, um, of viral entry because we started with the idea that entry is uh, the most conserved uh, um, pathway that you can probably target. So we stop all our assay at fairly early stages, so within the first round of replication. After that, we were able, for every compound, so we selected about 12 compounds after reiterative rounds of testing against different viruses, we were able to find out uh, where in the entry pathway these compounds work, so whether it's adhesion, internalization, uh, fusion, acidification of the endosome, and we managed to narrow it down quite specifically for some viruses, also for some sorry, uh, drugs, even to hypothesize what the target was going to be. Um, so yeah, we can get surprisingly close. We have uh, a good array of assays by now, yeah. Yeah, so we haven't uh, uh, explored what is already out there. We know that a lot of work has been terminated. With this type of uh, approach, uh, there is always a concern about toxicity, which, however, we think uh, can really be reduced uh, by reducing the length of treatment. So for the type of viruses that we're thinking of targeting, uh, this would be an acute treatment, like many viruses like EPC, Hep B, are chronic infection and uh, they would support a prolonged course of therapy as well as HIV, for instance. But we think that for the short time that it would take to stop an acute infection, like could be a dengue infection or an influenza infection, when especially you have at stake sometimes a life or uh, it can be a very debilitating disease, maybe there is a bit more flexibility about uh, the level of toxicity that we can, uh, that we can take. But um, yeah, the in vivo studies would uh, really provide a further indication and uh, it's a good idea to go back and see what has already been done and why some studies were stopped. Yeah.